Hey guys, and welcome back to another plugin review. Today we are looking at Boz Digital Labs Dust Boot. Now I've already done Lay Snapette and El Clapo, so go check out those videos. I go through all the features. We'll go through them again in this, but they kind of come as a trio of different human sounds. So you've got clapping, snapping, and stomping, and this is the stomping plugin. They all have the same interface, same features, just do different sounds. So uh, let's just dive straight in and I'll talk about the main features, how the plugin works, we'll go through some sounds and all of that. So the basic idea of this is to emulate people stomping in a room. Now it's sample based, but it's very clever in the way it changes the samples based on your settings so that you don't run out of RAM. It also just allows you to have huge rooms of people up to 150 stomps, which is, you know, pretty hard to record 150 people stomping at the same time and really lets you control that. So let's just dive into what the controls do and what really the features are. So you've got the amount of stomps, like I said, it's up to 150, but you also have this slop control and this is really the key. So it's basically the timing of the people stomping. Now at 0%, everyone stomps exactly the same time, which is humanly impossible, of course, um, and it goes all the way up to 100% where no one stomps at the same time. It's like a bunch of drunk people just jumping up and down on their boots. You kind of get the idea. So somewhere in the middle is where most of the usable sounds are going to be, but it just allows you to control that timing and give you that, that natural sound that would happen that just like stacking samples is not gonna do. And it's just that really clever kind of use of samples there. You have two mics for close. You have a spot mic and an overhead mic, which is really good because you get that kind of nice variation. And you have a room mics to capture the room, which is a big sounding room. You also have a step sequencer, which is really great. And you can control the step sequencer uh, and change between sequences. It's really good for those people doing live rhythms and live busking and stuff. You'd just be able to control your step sequences on uh, in real time and all that. And you have both group stomps and you can still play single stomps while you've got the group stomps which rely on these controls here. If we hit the advanced settings, you can see there's a few other cool features. You can turn the velocity to static, which is really good if you just want single static, otherwise keep it on velocity sensitive, which is really good for getting that natural kind of rhythm. Uh, you can change the panning of the single stomps so they pan across the keyboard. Now, uh, let me just make sure that's on there. Uh, if you have a listen, now they'll pan across the keyboard, which is really, really cool. Uh, or you can keep it centered. And you have timing. So if you've got your single stomps kind of sequenced out, and you know they're quantized all on the grid and you want a little bit more natural timing you can put them on sloppy and they'll follow the slop and you've got this kind of humanized kind of timing to the stomps which is a really cool feature to have you also have a pitch control which is good if you want to go for some quite crazy kind of pitch sound and you can control the amount of samples you're using um, so that you get more natural sounds or use less ram or whatever and like i said as you change the controls it will reload them so you're not using all the voices. So we'll go into that right now. Okay, so let's start really simple at something like two stomps. So you can hear uh, kind of the stomps and the slop control. So start two stomps. We're gonna set up a little sequence. Well, we're just gonna play a little sequence. So this is just gonna be on the four. Got your stomps there, right? So you got two stomps. Now, if you adjust this slop control, you'll see it will load probably. Uh, depends on the voices. Two stomps, we'll keep the voice under 150, so it should be fine. Now listen to the two stomps there in stereo. Listen to how out of time they go as you push this slop up. Not in time at all. Just all over the place, 100%. So that's really how the slop control works, and it gets much more interesting as we push up the stomps. So let's push up to what I like as a kind of crowd mode. Uh, so around here, 45, and you can really hear uh, these amount of stomps what's going on. 45 people all stomping at once. If we bring the slop down, it starts to sound fake because it's two in time, but it's really interesting sound. And as you turn it up, the timing gets more loose. That's that real crowd kind of thing. If you're doing a big kind of, you know, like a big queen will rock you kind of 
crowd sound are there. And if you're just going for drunk people. You, know, you kind of get the idea of how that slop control works. Uh, so uh, let's just push the stomps up. We're going to click this keep the slop around here so you can hear, you know, more and more stomps why you'd want to use more. It's going to take a while to load each time, I think. So sometimes you get a little bit of cut out in the sound as you, you max out the voices, but once it's loaded, it's fine. Let's push up to all the way. Huge. And often, the more stomps you want, you may want to turn the slot down if it starts getting a bit too out of time. As the more people are, that timing becomes uh, a bit looser. But let's, let's, let's hear what happens when you've got this many people. Or you want to go really tight. It's almost too tight. It sounds like a drum at this point. So let's turn the stomps and slop to kind of where I like it as a crowd kind of sound. It's like a big stompy sound and have a look at the mics. So let's just solo the close mic so you can hear the difference between the two. I'm going to turn off the EQ that I had on. So this is the spot mic. And as you go around to here, you've got overheads. Slightly different tone. And together, I think you really want to balance them together, but it just allows you to kind of control what kind of tone you want and do things that are impossible. Because, I mean, imagine close micing 150 people. So a lot of mics. Most desks won't hold it. So really cool to be able to emulate that. So, yeah, you can barely hear the difference there. Let's move to the room mic. It's just the room mic that's soloed, and you kind of want to dial it in. So if we unsolo it, pull it down. Just kind of dial it in for the ambience you want. Obviously, you can go really high. You know, keep it more natural. Now, of course, you can use your own reverb, but it's great to have a room recorded sample as well to get that kind of natural room sound. Now, the coolest thing about both of these, well, not the coolest thing, but just a really nice feature to have is the effects section. You have EQ and compressor for each of the two different mic sections, so close and room. And it's pretty simple, but it's really good just to be able to do that in the plugin without having to use extra plugins, as well as just treating each of these separately, which is great. Uh, the compressor has threshold attack, release ratio, and a mix control. Mix control is really useful. The only thing it doesn't have is volume, and the more you compress, the louder it gets, which is kind of annoying, and that's across all three plugins. It's, it's one of my gripes with this plugin. Uh, you also have a stereo width control, which is great if you want to kind of fit it together or you want to go super wide. And the EQ is a four band, fully parametric EQ. It has various different types of EQ. You've got high and low pass filters, high and low shelves, bell, band pass, and notch. So pretty much most of the EQing needs you're going to have for needing four different bands. And then if you need any more than that, which you shouldn't, uh, you can go grab your own EQ plugin. But just makes it really good to get kind of sounds out of the box and then just like save them as presets so you've got that set sound. Uh, so let's just quickly have a listen to the compressor. We'll start off on the close mic so you can hear what it can do. It's got this nice gain reduction meter up here which is very useful. You can blend it in. But you can really hear that volume difference that I'm talking about. Change the width. Maybe give it a bit more highs. Take out some of that boxiness. Give it a punchy low end. Almost give it like a kick sound. Pull that slop down and the stomps down. We might be able to get more of like a kick sound, right? You can hear that round robin now. Uh, same with the room, but maybe we do the opposite. This is the room. Pull out some of this low end. Pull out some of the kind of those frequencies. A bit more like that. Uh, let's pull that compressor in. 
Make it boom a lot. Mix that in. And then all together. If we turn these effects off, you can hear how much we've changed it. That's how it normally sounds. Completely different sound. So really good tools to have there. Um, so that's those sections. Uh, the last thing to talk about is the step sequencer. So we've just been playing with it, just doing, you know, single hits here. It's really easy to use. You have velocity control, you right click to turn it on and you have all these different steps and you can just create something really quick. So if we're just looping that. You have this speed control as well. You can go half time or double time and then name your sequence. So maybe we should just quickly build some sequences up. I'm just gonna bring the stomps down a bit lower so we got a little more kind of intimate sound. Turn off these EQs actually. Move back to that step sequencer. And so you can control them with your keyboard. So you can see this little keyboard here. I'm just got my MIDI keyboard and I'm just changing them all. So let's just build some quick sequences. Uh, so you can name them here, we probably won't, we'll keep them as they, as they are, uh, but let's just go through them. You can see what I'm doing with my MIDI keyboard. So really great for live use, and you can still play the single and group stomps. So if I wanted to add some extra stomps in there. So you kind of get the idea. Uh, like I said, my only gripe is that there's no kind of master volume in each of these sections to help with that kind of volume. Uh, changes you're gonna get from EQing and using the compressor just been really, really nice. Now the samples I have no problem with at all. Uh, if you've watched the little snapette, you'll notice I was talking about this kind of whooshy sound that I didn't like in there, but that's not in uh, Dust Boot. It sounds great to my ears. You can grab them all as a bundle, by the way. Sometimes they're on sale. I'm not sure if they're on sale anymore. Um, just go check it out. Link will be below. But that's Dust Boot. Uh, really enjoy it as a plugin. I enjoy all three of these plugins. I think they're just really cool. I mean, they're very specific, but they just, those stomps and slop or clap and slop, whatever, for each one. Uh, basically having how many people plus the timing just really allows you to get the sound in your head when you want for a clap. So if you want a big stadium sound or you want a really tight studio sound or anywhere in between, really, really useful for getting those kind of sounds. So go check out the other reviews of the Snap Ed and Dust Boot and please like and subscribe and I will see you next time. Yeah.